because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Coon Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's bank holiday Monday. It is pissing down with rain outside. <laughs> and we're somewhere in London, uh, joined by heavyweight professional boxer Franklin Ignatius. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, man. Thanks. Yeah, uh, oh, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, cool. yeah, I'm all good. Um, like you said, it's pissing down. <laughs> I'm just relaxing. We'll soon back to work. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know if it's because of the weather, but bank holidays used to be a bit more like, I don't know, this is a bit more livelier. People were out. I think it's probably the weather that's uh, everyone's decided to stay in this bank holiday. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, everyone's staying indoors. People ain't moving, man. It's a bit of a quiet one. But it's good, man. You know what I mean? Sometimes just relax. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Right, Franklin, obviously last time out for you. Um, I said this when you first said your fight with um, Jose Stewart, mm -hmm. that it was kind of uh, over the, the number of rounds. I mean, it seemed to be a waste at that. I mean, you guys had the rematch. Uh, you come out on top. So what's been going on since then? Yeah, well, since then I've been training. Um, you know, there's been rumours that I might fight different people. And um, I, Steve Robinson called me out, so I'm, that's a fight I'm looking to get on. But, um, yeah, I've just been training, cracking on. I'm literally looking to fight as soon as. I hope to fight in March. That couldn't happen, but hopefully May is the, is the good one. Mm. So, six fights for you now? Yes. Is that right? Five wins and obviously that, that one draw. So, I'm assuming, obviously, I remember interviewing you outside uh, the Sims's gym uh, a few years ago. I think, I'm not sure whether you'd actually turn pro or not by then. I'm, I can't remember, but... I think I was turn pro, I even had a fight yet. No. <laughs> I remember that, yeah, I didn't even had a fight yet. Had all dreads yeah. and that, clean shaving. <laughs> it's been years, man, yeah, it's been years. But, I mean, I, I'm assuming six fights in that kind of space of time from when you turn professional, you would have liked to have been a lot more active than th the six fights suggest. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think... Um, Honestly, the only reason I'm even at six fight now is because last year I had four and I wanted to have more. But um, obviously, the two-year gap with COVID kind of slowed things down because it's ironic, but I turned pro same time as Adelaide and Adelaide's already had all these other fights. Because I couldn't fight in COVID, you know what I mean? It was it just puts set things back a bit, but we got the horse rolling now. I'm cracking on. I always think it's very interesting at kind of these stages, even with, with Adelaide, obviously we're seeing Adelaide and and uh, Fabio Wardley uh, kind of having a little bit of back and forth lately. But it's an interesting mix between uh, like the 10 and 0 under guys because everyone's at kind of different levels. Like Even like Fraser Clark, obviously, who turned professional not that long ago, he's trying to kind of move himself quickly up the ladder. But for yourself, um, is it a case of like, right, you had a, the, the win, the rematch win over uh, Jose Stewart, and is it a case of now kind of just building on that getting uh, better opponents, no disrespect to anyone you fought, but just like for yourself, progressing in terms of opponents, getting the rounds in and building up that record. Yeah, exactly that, man. I mean, literally, like I said, I've had six fights and I really want to have as much fight as possible, get to that, like I said, that 10 and 0 area and then start pushing for bigger fights because I feel like I'm capable of it, man. And anyone I've seen below 10 and 0, I don't really see a challenge, to be honest. So I feel like anyone that wants it, I'm right here. Absolutely. Well, look, there's... A good pool of fighters in that bracket, like I said, where people like Adelaide, etc., you mentioned there, and even like the, the British champion in, in Fabio Wardley, there are a, still a lot of good matchups that could be made there. Um, I think, honestly, like, you know, obviously, I thought good luck to both Fabio and, and Adelaide. I know they're trying to get it on for, for whatever title, British, I believe, and I think it'll be a good fight. But, you know, outside of them guys, there's still quite a few guys in between that are up and around, you know. Um, I know the southern area is vacant. I know me and Fisher could get it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be a fight, you know what I mean? If that fight gets made, I'm happy for it as well. So there's a lot of guys around in and around that bracket that, you know, we, we can all be we ain't quite all in contention for Saturn. So whatever, whatever opportunity presents itself, I'm more than ready, yeah. Which, which guys are this from this kind of pool? Because everyone seems to spar each other as heavyweights. Like, you know, you could be... 2-0 and o or, or 10-0, and o, but you've the, the sparring pool kind of everyone has sparred each other. Who have you sparred? Um, I've been in the room with Adelaide, Fisher and Fabio. Um, for some weird reason, I've never actually been in the room with Fraser. But I have guys you mentioned, I've basically pretty much sparred most of them. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, there's been quite a few around in and around that area that I've sparred. But even with Hosea, before I fought him, I never sparred him or met the guy. Do you know what I mean? And if whatever fight gets made next, Robinson or whoever, I probably end up sparring me or but it's not going to make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting because I always speak to like, whenever I speak to heavyweights, they've always, someone's always, yeah, sparred people around potential opponents, etc. And then you hear in the press conference, yeah, you know what I did to you in sparring? <laughs> you know what it is, yeah? I'll be honest, yeah. A lot of the guys I've sparred, yeah, I've put the work in them, but the way I look at it is sparring, sparring. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've never really... Being the type of guy to be like, ah, oh, you know what? Yeah, I battered him. <laughs> and because I battered him, I'm going to get him in a fight. Books don't work that way. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't really take too much from sparring. But sparring, a lot of the time, just you trying to work on things. If you happen to get the better of him, it is what it is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like fight night is always his own little, little thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. But yeah, definitely, there's been some good spars with all of us. What, what do you make of like the top end of the, the heavyweight scene? I mean, we're we're blessed to have a lot of guys in that category as well, uh, mixing it up at uh, elite heavyweight world level. Um, but what, what, where do you kind of see this division at the moment? Obviously, we saw the return of Anthony Joshua uh, against Jermaine Franklin recently. We're still waiting to see what's going on regarding next moves for people like Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. But how do you kind of see that scene at the moment? I mean, to be honest, the way I look at it is um, they're all good guys, but they're all getting to that level in their career where everyone's thinking, you know what, let me have the best fights I can and call it a day, which is fair play, do you know what I'm saying? Because um, boxing's a young man's sport. No one's going to hang around in the sport forever. And, you know, Joshua, if I'm not mistaken, and um, Dylan, even even Americans, like Wilder, they're all get pushing on <clears> that. So it makes sense. I looked at the fight. <clears throat> I looked at um, Joshua's last fight with Franklin. He done all right. Like, everyone's knocking it. Said, oh, I should have knocked him out. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Maybe everyone's expected to see the big bam, but he done all right, man, considering, you know what I'm saying, Franklin looked more up for it in his last fight than he did with Dylan. I can't knock man for guy in the distance. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's Come on, man, he's just getting back up the horse. So, you know. I think you made a good point there. I think, like, uh, after that, people were... Ex I suppose... It's more kind of the fans there, etc. Would have come there and they would have, you know, oh yeah, Joshua's definitely going to knock him out, etc. But when you kind of look at the factors, and also we know Franklin is very durable, very resilient, put in a very good performance, which some people thought he beat White. That was subject to opinion, but this was a good fight for Joshua, and I think the fact that it, new trainer, etc. I think people probably being a little bit too harsh because he didn't get the knockout. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I agree. I think it's also a situation where over the last few fights, Josh has changed trainers several times. So I think some of the things that people are criticising isn't necessarily him getting to the end of the rope. It's more so him kind of in between styles. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a difficult thing. Like I feel like, especially when you're a late star in boxing, you yourself don't have a, a style that you're always going to box to. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So when you, like I've had it myself, I've changed a few coaches and it's a thing of, it takes a while, even sometimes a fight, two fights, three fights, before you settle in with whatever coach you happen to be working with. And with Joshua's case, it's literally been, hey, 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 hey. So he's never had the opportunity to really settle with whatever coach he's been in. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think that's kind of held him back in his last fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the, the big question for Joshua then in terms of style is, has he adapted a less, a less offensive style? Which, when we look at Joshua over the years and kind of see uh, him with that kind of knockout record and that kind of aggressive uh, style, um, are we going to see that again? I mean, that that's the question and people are thinking now, is he kind of just transforming into uh, someone that is happy to kind of box the guy uh, as opposed to actually go in there with that killer instinct, which we know he has? I think, like I said, I look at it as a situation of um, it's a bit of both. I think a part of him still has that killer instinct, but at the same time, he's becoming a vet. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's oh, true. It's mad when you refer to him like that. But you're right. In today's like he's in his thirties now. He's had like he's been professional for ten years. He's like bordering in that category. Like a lot of these guys are. Yeah, it's the truth. So and I feel like once you get to that vet mind state, the way you approach rounds is a bit different. You know what I mean? You're calculating. Yeah, I'm taking it in the bank. Da da da. And I feel like he, he was. He's not gonna have the urgency the same way. Even if it's part of him still wants it, if yeah. you get what I mean. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because he's just like, yeah, I'm winning this, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and I think all the fights with Usyk as well have kind of forced him to evolve. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And 
I think obviously a lot of the fans are still expecting a Joshua five years ago, but he's a different man. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't knock him for that. And I think it doesn't mean he can't put in great performances. I just think that he's not going to be necessarily just going straight free and frying all guns blazing unless the opportunity is there. Whereas maybe a couple of years ago, he would have forced it. <laughs> he would have said, fuck this. I yeah. just got it anyway. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. He did put a post out yesterday actually saying that he's not going to be returning to the ring until December. I mean, I found that very interesting because I think um, his promoter radio owner said that he'd like to him to be back out in the summer and then back out again to twice more this year. But it's interesting that he's not going to fight, so according to his social media, until December, yeah. I think that's, that's fucking horrible, man, because, like, um, fucking I'm feeling myself that as fighters, you need to be out as much as possible. Do you know what I mean? I think that's part of the reason where maybe back in the day, let's be honest, fighters just fought better. Because yeah. man's out here all the time. Like, if you look, look at it realistically, the performances you do in sparring are sometimes night and day from what you do on fight night yeah. just because you spar every week. <laughs> for someone like, I felt like I'm going to spar like two, three guys on Wednesday and for me it's like putting on my shoes. I do it all the time. <laughs> do you understand? But you might realistically only fight at uh, what? Twice? Once a year? Three times? Four times a year? Depending on what's going on because the business and politics and what have you. So it's like, it diminishes your performances. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think that's one thing like, you know, the UK, that's just kind of, I think, hurting UK fighters, really. Whereas maybe with the Americans or whatever, man might be a bum, but somehow he's got 15 fights. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Guy's a fucking plumber, but somehow he comes out 20 sound fights. You know, what the fuck? But it's because the Americans have a setup somehow where they just get a lot of fights going on. Do you know what I mean? And even from a couple of Europeans, I've seen it because I've gone sparring camps with Hergovic and whatever else. And when I'm out there, I see fighters, no offense, to, no disrespect. They're crap. <laughs> They're a piece of shit. But somehow, 15 fights, 20, I'm thinking, what the fuck? You're crap. You're struggling. But I can see, like, you have a, a situation in your country where somehow you build up 20, 15, whatever else fights, and you kind of get used to fighting, essentially. You know what I mean? And I think that doesn't really translate here in the UK. You know, the best example of this, and again, no disrespect to this fighter I'm going to mention, but mm. David Hay, when he made his comeback after like a, a few year layout, mm. fought a guy called Arnold Gerzaj. They called him the Cobra. Mm. And he was 31 and 0. And I have, to, I have to admit, when he was announced as the opponent, I, I didn't know who a 31 and 0 heavyweight was. But that was his record. Like I said, no disrespect to him, absolutely not. Obviously, he's built his record up and, and fought with his fault. But I think if there's someone in the heavyweight scene who's 31-0 and and you don't know who they are, then th there's got to be a few questions asked there, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Shout out the Cobra, though, anyway. Shout out the Cobra. Cobra might be an IFL fan. Not Carl Froch, but yeah, this Cobra, yeah. So. Well, shout out to you, man. You know what I mean? And what props for doing that anyway. It's not hard, it's not easy, so... But yeah, man, you know, I think that's the crazy thing about boxing. But um, yeah, like get back to that point. I think Joshua is in a cool, you know, is a cool guy, but it's just that inactivity, I think, the coach changes, all these things are hurting him. And I think when you look at all these factors, he's doing good. Because yeah. all these things are going on and he's still managing to produce good performances. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I can't knock him, man. Yeah, yeah. People love their opinion in boxing. That's why we love the sport. Obviously, do you know what I mean? Oh fuck! Honestly, the next morning, everyone like people in the street were going to me. Yeah, uh, oh fuck hell, mate! Couldn't fucking knock him out, could he? And I was like, do you want to go and give it a go, Franklin? Seriously. Yeah, listen, I was, uh, people are watching it. Yeah. I remember even as, I was watching with a couple of my people, and literally as the fight's finishing, people are turning to me, Franco, he's crap. <laughs> he's finished. He's washed. I said, relax, man. He just had a hard nah, time. Franco, he's done. The fuck you know? <laughs> Hush, hush. All right, well, listen, let's just, um, yeah, we'll finish off on obviously, yeah, if this a fight potentially be interesting with uh, you and Steve Robinson, if that's who it is. If not, then I'm sure uh, you'll be matched uh, appropriately in due course. So, yeah, but I'm assuming you just want a date, really. Yeah, literally, man. All I ever want now is literally a date as soon as possible. I think um, I've been, you know, because I've just been, there's been a lot of things bubbling behind the scenes. So in my head, I thought, oh, I might be fighting soon. I'm fighting soon. So I never really took a step back from training. Yeah. Does that make sense? So when I, someone says, oh, I need to get into camp, I've been in camp for, <laughs> for almost forever, it feels like, do you know what I mean? So really, for me, the sooner the date is, the better. And if it's signing on like a short notice fight somewhere, it ain't a problem to me. I'm in shape and in condition enough to fight right now. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, well, I'm sure you'll keep us posted on that and we'll come and do another little follow-up bit when you do have some news, Franklin. Um, right, have you got anything else you'd like to add, mate? Um, yeah, I guess, you know, follow me on Instagram and uh, Twitter um, at Franco Boxing and Frank Ignatius. And, um, yeah, I'll try to keep guys posted and, yeah, and see you all soon. Absolutely. Franklin Ignatius, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV and we'll definitely catch up with you again soon. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 